Kia ora, I'm David Chaston with 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz. This week, everything you need to know in 90 seconds at 9 o'clock with news of wide variation in the major economies and their prospects as they exit the pandemic. US jobless claims fell slightly last week, down to 709,000 and slightly less than expected. That was their lowest level in four months. There were another 478,000 initial pandemic unemployment assistance claims. That leaves 4.6 million people on these benefits, which are being extended in the stimulus bill just passed by Congress. It will be signed into law later today. Hopes are high it will transform the situation for millions and kickstart their economy. Equity investors are betting it will. January layoff rates declined more than expected too, also a positive sign for the US economy. And the February US federal government deficit was $311 billion and far higher than the same month in 2020 and much higher than the $265 billion expected. For the 12 months to February, this deficit has swelled to almost $3.6 trillion or 16.5% of US GDP. It is certain to go much higher before it starts to decline. A huge repair job is ahead of them after a long period of truly awful mismanagement. In China, February vehicle sales were 1.46 million. That makes them the largest vehicle market in the world, even though these February sales were sharply lower than for January, and even lower than for February 2019. And the ECB said it would ramp up the pace of its purchases of Eurozone debt as it seeks to support the region's flagging economic recovery. But faster may not necessarily mean more in the long run. Australian consumer inflation expectations rose to 4.1% in February, a rise back to levels last seen a year ago. And S&P has warned Australia it must lower its deficit quickly or it will lose its coveted AAA credit rating. They are pointing out that federal and state deficits of about 14% of GDP forecast for 2021 are inconsistent with a AAA rating. About 10% of that is by the federal government, and it seems to need to get that back to about 3% of GDP to satisfy S&P. In New York, the S&P 500 is open today with a 1.4% rise in early afternoon trade, and the US Treasury 10-year yield is up one basis point to 1.52%. The price of gold starts today firmer in New York, up $6 to $1,724 an ounce. And oil prices have risen more than $2 overnight to just under $66 a barrel in the US, while the international price is back up to just over $69 a barrel. And the Kiwi dollar opens the day noticeably firmer at 72.1 US cents, mainly because the greenback has weakened. Against the Australian dollar, we're softer at 92.8 Australian cents, and against the euro, we're a little change at 60.2 euro cents. That means our trade weighted index is now at 74 and a small overall firming. Kia ora, I'm David Chaston. That was 98.9, brought to you by interest.co.nz.